personal finance practice problem using Excel. Mutual fund net asset value per share calculation. Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Here we are in our Excel worksheet. If you don't have access to it, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank sheet. But if you do have access, three tabs down below. We got the example, practice blank, example, in essence, answer key. Let's look at it now. Information on the left, calculations on the right. We're gonna be imagining we are investing in a mutual fund, calculating then the net asset value per share calculation. The second tab is gonna be a practice tab, having some pre-formatted cells so you can work the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The third tab, a blank tab, is where we're gonna do some of the Excel formatting. This is where we will work. If you don't have any of this, that's okay. You can open up a blank sheet. You can add the data on the left. I would start out if having a blank sheet by selecting the entire sheet, possibly with the triangle up top right clicking on it to put down and lay down your baseline formatting i usually go to the format cells and go to currency negative numbers bracketed red and then i remove the dollar sign i remove the decimals and then i'm not going to hit okay because i already have this i'm just going to x out of it up top so then you can add your data on the left hand side widening the cells as necessary make a skinny c column and then we're good to go we're going to be imagining we are investing in a mutual fund. Remember that a mutual fund represents then us putting money into a fund that will be pooled together with other people's investments managed by a fund manager that is going to be allocating our pooled investment over a more diversified array of securities in accordance with whatever the rules of the funds are allowing us to have more diversification with a mutual fund than possibly we could do by buying individual stocks and bonds so then the question is well how how can we then value our fund in many ways we can think of it as a similar thing as if we were trying to value stocks note that if we're investing say in stocks then stocks represent an ownership interest in a corporation corporations being separate legal entities having their ownership interest broken out into equivalent units equivalent shares equivalent stocks then we're typically thinking about those corporations traded on the stock exchange publicly traded companies then making them more accessible more transparent in terms of their information and if we were to buy the stocks then we would have like an ownership interest in the corporation which we can value by then comparing it to the other like units or basically the same kind of quantitative units being sold and that will help us to value our shares now when we talk about a mutual fund now we have multiple assets that are being allocated to multiple different stocks and bonds and so on and so forth but we can still kind of think of them uh, as a value on a, like a per share type of basis even though the fund is representing investments in multiple things such as multiple stocks and possibly bonds so we could think of then if we looked at the fund in terms of what they have and the liabilities we'd say well their assets if we look at their underlying assets which if they're investing in publicly traded securities like stocks and if they're trading in bonds then we can value what those are based on the market and we can determine in essence what their asset value is and they can they could report that to us and then their liabilities representing what they owe what are the obligations that then the difference between the two just like similar with a business and a business that would be equity here we can think of it as the net assets would be the net value that we can allocate over and then we can allocate that over in essence the number of shares and we can think of that in a similar fashion as we think of like the value of the stocks what what typically you know in, a, in relation or in general what, what we might buy and sell the shares for for example so if i was to calculate that we could say okay what's the net asset value per share and let's then make this cell a little bit wider on column d i'm going to take column d and drag it to the right and so let's just do our calculation let's make this a header thing here let's not get ahead of, don't get ahead of yourself we're going to select these two. We're going to go up top, home tab, thought group, bucket drop down, and I'm going to make that black and the lettering, I'm going to make that white. That's what I typically do with the headers. You could do something different if you want, but that's what I'm doing here. We're going to say this equals, I'm just going to pull over the assets 
and then tab. I'm now in cell E2. I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna pull this from my data set. So if I wanted to change the data set, we can do so and run multiple problems with a similar set of facts. And then the liabilities, I'm just gonna say that equals the liabilities here. And then in E3, I'm gonna say this equals the liabilities here. Note that once we have this set up to begin with, I could have done this more easily. I could have said, well, let's delete this, delete this. Once I have this here, I could just drag this with the autofill this way. And that's the relative cell reference here. I could select these two and put my cursor on the autofill handle and drag it down. And the relative cell references should then be pulling on over. Pull it on over. Let's put an underline here. We're gonna to go to the home tab, font group. Let's put an underline, which is a line underneath the number, which you might suspect by the name. This is gonna be the net assets then. If you were valuing a company, this looks like the good old, uh, the, the accounting equation here, right? Assets equal liabilities plus equity or assets minus liability equals equity. This time we're just gonna call it net assets. So if you took all the, if you were to liquidate, for example, and sell all the assets, you would think that you would get this uh, 842,300,000, and then you subtract out the liabilities, that would be the assets that would be remaining, liabilities being what is owed to a third party, the net assets then what goes to the owners, in our case, the people that hold on to the shares that represent the ownership of the investment. So we're gonna subtract this out. So there we've got 816,600,000, uh, and we're then going to say number of shares number of shares is going to be equal to equal to the 35 million and so then if i divide that out we're going to get our net asset value per share and this is going to be equal to the net assets of 816 million six hundred thousand divided by the 35 million and let's add a couple decimals here to make it a bit more exact so i'm going to go up top and go home tab number group couple decimals let's put an underline here to make it look nice and neat font group underline and then we can select this whole thing and go home tab and font group and hit the bucket drop down i'm going to make it blue that's what i usually do but if you don't have that blue you can go to the more colors right here and it's in the standard area on the wheel and that's the one i typically use why i just do you can do i mean you don't have to you don't have to do it this way although my way is usually the right way to do things but this one time you could other ways might be equally correct but in any case uh there we have it so and the, the bottom line is if you're investing in the mutual funds you want to have an idea of of what you're investing in being a mutual fund as opposed to the stocks but you can imagine the mutual funds kind of valuing the underlying values and then trying to break them down into a standardized unit of shares in a similar way as with the stocks and that will typically be done like every, once a you know at the end of the day for example uh and so that can help you to determine the the, the price in a similar fashion as you might do with other kinds of investments such as investments in the stocks.